Hey YouTube, um, welcome back to my subscribers and welcome to all of the new people. I'm looking for, um, I don't know what I'm looking for y'all. Okay, so we're back, part two. Y'all go over to The Remnant, subscribe, like, and share. And also, don't forget our social media. Um, Go over here. Follow, share, like, comment. Um, feel free anytime to repost any of the things that I post besides my personal pictures. <laughs> you know, I gotta put that out now. Um, any of this knowledge or information, feel free to repost. Um, and shout out to all my Instagram followers. That's what they say. Yeah, followers. You know, Twitter got their lingo. Y'all, I'm old, so you know. So, um, Remnant, I think I had your page up. Yep. Go over. Calamity Jane. Um, subscribe, follow, like, share, comment. Just come. Let's be sociable and let's repost this information. Um, and we're going to just get back into what we were reading last night. You ready? Ready, be. You ain't gonna speak to the people. Oh, I can't see a screen, so I don't. I didn't know I was on. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you been on. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and I'm being such a creep. Too. Oh my god, you so petty. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know why you didn't think you were on. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna hide my face. <laughs> Yeah, she threw me like, like I probably was gonna dig a booger next. Like, <laughs> hey. and if you would have, y'all know this video still would be posted. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Oh man, y'all don't mind uh us. We're gonna try to make it shorter than last night, but we're not gonna not be ourselves. <laughs> I'm ashamed right now. Why? You weren't being the creep. I was fidgeting, looking like super ADHD over here. <laughs> you was looking to the left, to the right. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, y'all. So good. <sighs> okay. So weirdo. It happened. <clears throat> right. Okay, so we're going to start, for those of you who have decided to open the document along with, we're going to start on page 27, and it's a report on the establishment of a periodical. Um, and as far as I know, a periodical means like a newspaper or some kind of um, newsletter, something published for you to read. And it says, to be the organ of the black and colored race on the American continent. Your committee to whom was referred the duty of inquiring into the expediency of establishing a literary periodical, which should at the same time be the organ of the National Board of Commissioners, would respectfully submit that they have investigated the subject as thoroughly as the limited time allowed them would permit. It is evident to everyone that a well-conducted -conduct and well-supported press is a most potent instrument in the moral and intellectual culture and elevation of any people. This is emphatically a reading age and country. Mm. So it's like today, right? Mm. Elaborate works which in former ages were only within the reach of the wealthy few by popular and cheap editions are brought within the reach of the most humble individual or the most limited purse. While reviews, magazines, and newspapers cover the land, authors, editors, essayists, and critics have become a numerous class, and by no other class in an enlightened country is so great an influence exerted upon the characters of their fellow men and the future destinies of the race. Hmm. Let's just talk about CNN, NBC, all these all media with this fake ass news about melanated people. Right. <clears throat> and all they tend to be interested in reporting on is melanated people. Killer. 
1850. This is 1850s again. Uh, theirs is the silent influence which goes with the divine into his study and dictates the character of the doctrines and precepts which he must impress upon the minds of his hearers. It mounts the rostrum with the orator and paints each glowing period that rolls from his tongue. It center, excuse me, it enters the hails of legislation and gives tone to the debates and shapes the character of the enactments. It enters the schoolhouse and stamps it, it, its impress its impress upon the inquiring mind of the child and molds the character of the rising generation. Just real quick before we go down, did you peep how he referred to as persons as the divine? Meaning you are a divine person being with full sovereign rights? Right. See, uh, and yeah, yeah. It makes me think <clears throat> Um, you said he knew that he was melanated, but then since he seen it wasn't working out here, he decided to start pumping the Africa stuff. Right. I, like all of this stuff that we're reading is a result of his realization that he will never be on an equal, not even equal, he'll never be on a sovereign playing field with them, it, with people who he feels like has no authority to tell him he's less than. You see what I'm saying? Or different. And it makes me think about um, how all the people in the past that led a revolution, um, this would be some of the wording because it's intelligent. You know, the revolution doesn't start with people on the street with guns. It starts with the mind. So, thinkers. Yeah, the thinkers. Um, it's It sounded like he was trying to trigger thought. And just maybe back then, people weren't ready for change because people are comfortable in their oppression. So, But this also just kind of proves that when they, when they say there's nothing new under the sun, that everything is cyclical. Like, right. <clears throat> we're just going to keep going through the same thing over and over until the prophecy says it's not going to happen. Like, it's just going to be on repeat because it's, it's crazy that Something that was written over 150 years ago can literally be applied word for word, by the way, today. I mean, it's... it's, it's they say crazy. history repeats itself until that, that chain is broken. And exactly. King Drop, when I was first listening to him, there was one video, maybe a couple that stuck out, which was the one about the deer um, and the rabbit. The deer woke up and couldn't be back comfortable enough to just be dumped down. It wasn't enough. And Ooh. then the other video, or it was like something he was sharing an illustration. I'm um, talking about the loop. Like people get literally stuck on a loop. And that's how this thing has been for the last, since they got here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I just think about the, uh, who was that? I think it was Lex Will that I saw. He had a video about um, in Get Out how the deer was symbolic. He watched another video where that guy was saying he researched it. Deer was symbolic of melanated people. Mm -hmm. And he said the video that dropped it a while. And I'm sure when you first started listening to a while back, you know, mm -hmm. the deer got tired. He couldn't be dumbed down. Like, yeah. hello. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, yeah. Interessante. <laughs> you so funny. <laughs> she don't boast out her Spanish, y'all. She's showing out tonight. Really? <laughs> I got to practice for um, South America. Right. <laughs> anyway. Right. <laughs> Ready. All right, so where did I leave off? Okay, so in the domestic. In the domestic circle and in every relation of life, it's all pervading influence is felt. We're talking about the media. It is this facility for the rapid spread of intelligence and communication of ideas which principally distinguishes the civilization of the 19th century from all that have preceded it. And any movement which fails to secure a due share of this potent influence in its favor 
will be always undervalued in public estimation. This, like all other great influences in this country, has been arrayed against the Negro. I mean, just there it is, right in your face. He ain't gonna sugarcoat it. And while both law and public estimate have conspired to place him in such a position as to exclude him entirely from all the usual avenues of literature and science and render it impossible for him to make any great proficiency in intellectual culture, the very fact that in those attainments he is inferior to the privileged class, hmm, not white people, but the privileged class Mm -hmm. who has every incentive to exertion and every opportunity for improvement is brought up as evidence of natural inferiority, thereby making the legitimate fruit of oppression the strongest argument in favor of the oppressor and of perpetuating the oppression. Like this wordplay. And then isn't perpetual meaning forever? Perpetuating the oppression. You talked about that's that loop. (laughs) Word. Did you see that? (laughs) No. Well, you're on screen. (laughs) Now, do you see my ghetto straw? Girl. Girl, I should have got me some QT ice. You know what? I ain't going to tell you how they say the um, the ice Mm -hmm. is dirty. I already heard it, and I'm still going to eat QT ice. Well, eat the mold. Keep eating the mold. Girl. I get sunny. I get sunny. So. <laughs> Girl, Sonic too. I know. I know. And Publix Deli. Really? Get your life at Publix Deli. Really? I'm going to need you to stay out of Publix. That's your stove. <laughs> okay, lemon pepper wings. Okay, so let me go back. Okay. Okay. You're supposed to keep me on track. We said this wasn't going to be three hours. It's going to be like 50 11. It's not. We can't just not be ourselves. Okay. That's like right. boring, boring. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to be the sound of reasoning. Back to the article. <laughs> okay. Um. But he, that was a very powerful statement right there. So rewind that part, y'all. Click back just a few seconds. What did it say again? What did he say? One more again. Here we go. He said, let me see. He said, the very fact that in those attainments, the Negro, he's talking about, he is inferior to the privileged class who have every incentive to exertion and every opportunity for improvement is brought up as evidence of natural inferiority, thereby making the legitimate fruit of oppression the strongest argument in favor of the oppressor and of perpetuating or putting it on that recurring loop oppression, putting Mm. oppression on that recurring loop. So, how did you know we were going to need this right now? Right. (laughs) So, moving on. In accordance with this spirit, every branch of learning has been subsidized for the express, excuse me, every branch, branch, am I hungry? (laughs) A branch of learning has been subsidized for the express and about purpose of keeping the Negro down and preventing him from ever rising in the scale of humanity. Now keep in mind, this is all about media and the effects that it has um, with having the elite or the privileged being in control of it all and then them downplaying the negro it sets the tone for the society and so because of what they see in the media i mean and he just said in accordance with this spirit of what they do in the media right every branch of learning has been subsidized for the express and about purpose like the whole point of it all is of keeping the negro down and preventing him from ever rising in the scale of humanity. And then that's what I said um the other day on Instagram. Like every time we hear a story, we be the first to repeat the story, not gathering any facts, and the story is just making yourself 
look like just another animal. Um, mm-hmm. They're not human. And we be the first to jump on a wagon to my son. Yeah. Um, they need to kill him. He need to die. Like, who says that? About another human and you being ruled over by monsters. So. <clears throat> right, right. Uh, it says, for this purpose, the whole power of the government must be used to prevent the abolition of Negro slavery or the building up of black nationality anywhere. Mm. Yeah. The word of God must be corrupted. <laughs> The word of God must be corrupted and the evidence of the church adduced to show that slavery is a blessing. This brother better read, he better read that word compatible with the exercise of the highest and purest Christianity. The well-established facts of history must, the, oh my girl, girl. Don't start, don't start. Okay, I may read me back in. Because I this is about the way you out. This about the way all y'all out. The well-established facts of history must be falsified, and science must be suborned. I don't know what suborn means, but I'm sure that means like fixed or whatever to prove that black is white and that white is black. It's a. <laughs> Hold on. So, so what's the word suborn? S U B O R N E D. You see it? Mm-mm-mm. You gotta show your screen. Right. You see it now? To procure unlawfully, to bribe, to accomplish a wicked pur- purpose, especially to induce. A witness to perjury to lure someone to commit a crime 1530s from middle French suborner to seduce to instigate bribe and directly from Latin subornar um, employ as a secret agent incite secretly originally equip fit out furnished from sub under secretly see sub or an air equipped related to or though Role, rank, series, arrangement. So just, hold on. Just try, just, ugh. It says word form and element meaning under, beneath, behind, from up under, or from under, resulting from further division. So we know, right. Okay. They came from the damn underworld. <laughs> yeah. Man, oh, let me speak. Oh, oh, sick. You know you're on screen. <laughs> yeah, this how she yeah. at. This how she at all day on the phone, y'all. Yeah. yeah, you know she she is not gonna edit that out. I don't care. Judge accordingly. Just make sure you tell all people I'm putting this truth out. Right. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Damn. Okay, so let me go back. It said the word of God must be corrupted and the evidence of the church adduced to show that slavery is a blessing compatible with the exercise of the highest and purest Christianity. The well-established facts of history must be falsified and science must be suborned to prove that black is white and that white is black. And to cap the climax, some American savans or savans, S A V A N S, I don't know what it is. What's that one? Savans, savans, hold on. Mm-hmm. Let me look it up. Pause. S-A-V-A-N. Yes. Yeah, add an S on the end. Let 
no match. Wait, did I read that right? Okay, I took the S off. And it looked like it's related to Savannah. Also, Savannah, treeless plain, 15 fish, these from Spanish, Savannah, earlier, Savannah, treeless from Taino, Arakan, Zabana in U.S. use, especially in Florida, a track of low-lying, marshy ground. Okay. Okay, it said Port City in the U.S. state of Georgia from Savannah name applied to the Native Americans in the area by the early European explorers, perhaps from a self designation of the Shawnee Indians or from the European topographical term Savannah um, one eminent for learning 1719 from French savant a learned man noun use of adjective savant learned knowing former present participle it's a former present participle of savior to know from vulgar Latin sapphire, from Latin sapphire, be wise, see sapient. So sapient is wise from old French sapient, from Latin sapientem, nominative sapiens. Would that be like homo sapiens? S A P I E N S A P I E N S. Yes. Present participle of sapphire. <laughs> To taste, have taste, be wise from Pyro, to taste, to perceive, old Saxon, uh, okay. I know you can't see it because I ain't want to do the Chinese thing. So I stopped sharing. <laughs> Don't be petty all your life, okay? <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay, so we going back to, um, we ready. All right. Gets <laughs> All right. Um, and it says, and to cap the climax, some American savants have given a practical answer to the question of the prophet. Can the Ethiopian change his skin by proving, as they say, that the ancient Ethiopians belong to the white race? But one more step is needed. And that by the skill of American ethnologists and the pure morals and strict virtue of American patriarch is rendered comparatively easy. That is to prove that the modern Negroes, as well as the ancient ones, belong to the white race and bring us back to the old fashioned doctrine of the unity of the human species. The human species. The whole new world order, the whole we are all one. What? Oh, Bombo. Cha. How about this man? How he do all that? I wonder, you said he died? I wonder how. Of tuberculosis. Something they probably gave him. Now, keep in mind that this is from the convention, so it, it's, it's him and it's, you know, all these other committee members so we're gonna see at the end who all contributed to this particular report okay um, and they bag all of them that, that's that's a group of hiddles right there this whole all these people on these committees so but yeah so he i don't know about you but to me it seems like he's kind of alluding to that whole one world government situation yeah you know, amalgamate certain ethnic groups out so that we all have one race. You know what I mean? So, or whatever. You know what I mean? So, what did he say? I ain't get that. <laughs> what? How did you get he that said, from that? Okay. He said, um, by the skill of American ethnologists, uh, and the pure morals and strict virtue of American patriarch is rendered comparatively easy. That is to prove that to prove that the modern Negroes, as well as the ancient ones, belong to the white race, 
and bring us back to the old fashioned doctrine of the unity of the human spe- species. So basically, like they're trying to write it up, you know, they're using this tricky science. Right. Or uh, trying to write it up as if we come from them, so we're all one yeah. thing. And I, I think it kind of just went off the deep end talking about New World, One World Government, child. Yeah, I'm tired. Don't mind me, child. But no, nah, that, that's true, because that's what they're teaching. Like, our religions are equal, and, you know, just the whole push. And it's just like, uh, no. So. Okay. That's where I got from it so far. Still interesting. You so far. All right. In spite of all the obstacles thrown in their way, many colored men in this country have made attainments in literature and science, which would be creditable to any class of men under the most favorable circumstances. <clears throat> but the proper sphere of action have remained unknown except in the immediate circle of their acquaintance. There has never yet been any fair exhibition of the literary and scientific attainments of the Negro race. Is the literature of the whites as well as in white society, excuse me, in the literature of the whites as well as in white society, the Negro is at a discount and nothing can raise him in either, but occupying a manly independent position attained by his own efforts. Entrepreneurship. Um. There have been published in the United States some 20 different newspapers edited and conducted, most of them with marked ability, by colored men, all of which, with the single exception of Frederick Douglass' paper, after progressing for a longer or shorter period, have been suspended for want of patronage. While, therefore, your committee have nothing to offer in relation to newspapers, in the country conducted entirely by colored men, they would earnestly recommend the establishment of a periodical, which while it shall be the organ of the board of impression shall be open to a fair and impartial discussion wait, wait a minute, of all questions connected with the welfare, progress and development of the Negro race. So basically like a periodical or a newspaper or a publication all about us, what we need to do, how to get ourselves together, what's going on, who's doing what, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and that it should also be made a literary periodical calculated to give a fair representation of the acquirement of the colored people. So to show that we do stuff, you know. Like what BET started out to be. Or did they? Hmm, touche. It's so fun. All right. <laughs> that to this end, some of the ablest colored writers in both hemispheres should be engaged as its regular contributors and articles invited on the various branches of literature, science, art, mechanics, law, commerce, philosophy, theology, etc. Um, I like how he said on both in both hemispheres. So he's talking about a united, melanated situation. Yeah, North and South America, right? Yes. Uh, and that all the articles shall be the productions of colored men, except such selections as may be useful in illustrating some of the fundamental principles of this organization. Your committee believe that, okay, so we, the committee, believe that the publication of such a work would affect an incalculable amount of good in various ways. Let me scroll down a little bit. It would bring the evidence of progress before those who deny such progress in a manner that it could not be disputed. And by furnishing manifestations of talent on the part of a large number of colored persons would have more effect than masterly productions by one or two individuals at the same time that it would present to colored men of ability an inducement to write, which they do not now possess. 
And I wonder if this is here. Let me pay the phone. I wonder if this is how, um, like the Jets and the Ebony's and the the um copper copper magazines got started. You know what I mean? Right. By um maybe possibly reading something like this and being like, you know what, I'm gonna start being a magazine. Mm. I looked up both hemispheres just to see. And in my mm -hmm. brain, you know, I had to connect through pictures, so it's like um both. Well, the supposed circle, but you know, just all around the world, we need to come together and be by ourselves. <laughs> come together. I mean, everywhere. So it's like I, I took it as like you know, I mean, you know, I'm gonna be extra deep. <laughs> oh lord! I took it as like come y'all shut out of like wherever you are scattered. We need to see, you know, stuff like this. Like, I feel like our our periodical is YouTube and Instagram or whatever social media you share your um knowledge on. Right. Because that's where we get it. You're not going to get it in books. Right. Well, you will get it in books, but you know what I mean. People don't stop it. reading. <laughs> and and people just don't read, but they'll be in that phone all day. Right. So... Anyway, let's not get too deep because you know I'm about to be in twelve feet. You know what? Uh, <laughs> we are. Let me scroll down a little bit more. I just thought about what you were saying yesterday about um, our black universities, and it's just like they have tricked us into thinking that going to their schools is better. Like, do you know how much flack I got about going to the school I went to? Like, it didn't get me into higher education. Like, it don't hold the same weight as all these other degrees. Like, and I'm like, but this is ours. This is, like, people die. Like, people, you can't go nowhere else. That's why we had this. Like, <laughs> and in my hometown, you have my HBCU, and then you have two other major universities, and then you have like our JUCO became like a university or Florida State College. I think it's a university or a state college. I don't know. Some kind of college now. So you have all these different education um, areas for education. But like when I tell you we had the bottom of the totem pole, like we're like a laughing stock. Like it's, we have super low enrollment and it just, it's sad because it's so much, like my school was founded in 1866. 1866 you know what i'm saying like people should be flocking to it to preserve the history preserve you know what i mean like and our alumni do what we can but you know people just they gotta send their damn kids like <laughs> emma was college in jacksonville florida go i mean it's an amy school but you know judah needs to get out the bones <laughs> all right right <laughs> you know what i mean hell i did i went there and look how it turned out right <laughs> <laughs> She's a stand-up citizen. <laughs> I do my best. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Right. Ready? Yeah, hold on. Let me hide my face again. Quit hiding, girl. You know I got. Get... You got me all on blast over here, looking like a, a dweeb. But you know, sometimes I just be sitting listening, and then I have my mouth open, looking all ugly. Uh. -uh. <laughs> I'm over here like twitching. <laughs> I got an eyelash that just won't let me live. You know, it won't let you be great. At all. So excuse me, y'all. And I play my eyeballs bread. And my contacts dry. Well, do you want me to pause it so you can drip, drop, drop? Drip, drop. Drip, 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 drop. No. Okay. Oh, I should be ashamed because I just said that. That did I watch Empire? Anyway, no, <laughs> let's continue. I mean, I haven't watched it since the first season. So, Good. Um, That's when I stopped, too. They got too frisky it for got me. Extra. It was too extra. Okay. I can't. Okay. Like, all y'all need to go sit down somewhere. Right. Hood fantasies. Right. Hood okay. fantasies of being Caucasian rich. <laughs> right. <laughs> It was all, all 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 kind of stuff going on. I was like, no, thank you. Like, don't even realistic. Like, you can't do this in the hood. You'll be dead. Don't that. 
Okay. Anyway, your committee think that it should be made a standard and permanent work capable of reflecting credit upon our race. Where's our credit? And to this end, would recommend that each number be stereotyped so as to make it permanent compendium and book of reference to mark the progress and development of the race. Wow, I like that, like a yearbook. Such a work, having a special duty to perform, should differ in some of its essential features from excuse me, any of the other publications, the monthly magazines, and quarterly reviews of the day. Although we have no doubt that such a periodical can, and in a very short time, be made to sustain itself and pay a fair profit, yet to place its success beyond contingency and to ensure its permanency, we would recommend that all its expenses be paid from and all its receipts go into the regular fund of the board. While we could not in the smallest degree slight or disparage the anti-slavery cause, and while such a per periodical must from its very nature be the most per powerful and efficient of all, anti-slavery instrumentalities, yet we would recommend that no peace be received merely for its anti-slavery qualities, but only for its merit as a literary production. The fact that a considerable portion of its patrons as well as contributors will probably be from other countries and that solid will doubtless, will doubtless predominate over light matter in its pages together with economical reasons show that it should be a quarterly we therefore recommend for your adoption the following resolution like real quick i didn't get that one sentence there was too many commas and i got lost um it said while we could not in the smallest degree slight or disparage the anti-slavery cause and while such a periodical must, from its very nature, be the most powerful and efficient of all anti-slavery instrumentalities. All right, so they're not trying to downplay it. Uh, and they're trying to say, like, they should be the very, the most powerful, like, thing out there to go to be anti-slavery. Um, yeah, we would recommend that no peace be received merely for its anti-slavery quality. So all of it can be about anti-slavery. Yeah. It has to have some literary production. Some merit as literary production, right? Just like today, quit making slave movies. Like, let's get some like real live acting. Like, let's do some talent. Let's get an original storyline. Something. Something that's real. Right. Uh, uh. All right. So let's see what these resolutions are. Uh, resolved that the Board of Commissioners be authorized and instructed to establish a quarterly periodical as the organ of this organization in accordance with the foregoing title, or excuse me, foregoing outline, made it up, to be called the Africo American Repository. Side note, that's what they refer to uh, African Americans who moved to Liberia. They call them Africo Americans in Liberia. And it is not Peachy Keen. Okay. Uh, to be called the Africa American Repository or some other name equally suggestive of its character. So these are the hitters James Whitfield, J. The Theodore Holly, and W.M. or William Lambert. Oh, Mr. Whitfield having to leave Cleveland for Buffalo to answer the demands of the telegraphic dispatch. The report was handed in by Mr. Holly. The alien American, we are assured and requested by me. Mr. Davis to say we will be in, it's on the E, okay. What was this cross right here? The committee had here recommended to the consideration of the convention Frederick Douglass paper, but in consequence of the illiberal and supercilious position assumed by him, so, ooh, tea girl, assumed by him towards the convention, from the issue of the call to its assembling, denouncing those concerned as being unintelligent, unwise, ooh, he unintelligent, unwise, and I don't know what that says, and eventually refusing to publish anything in favor of the movement, but promptly giving publicity 
to everything against it. The convention properly declined to entertain the proposition of the committee and consequently ordered it to be struck out. Ooh, Frederick Douglass. And look how much his name, he, yeah, even Trump talked about Frederick Douglass. They say if they put your name out there and you melanated, then you were agent or traitor. So we have to reconsider and rethink who our heroes are. Because it's turning out that our heroes were not actually heroes. Girl, that darn conversation with Who no. Three way girl, that darn Harry Tubman had me like, uh, clutch his pearls. Shout out to Uno. Um Come back on the screen so they can see you. You know what? Shout out to Brother Uno. We all go over to getting to the root of it all. Um, he just say some stuff sometimes to make you think. And we looked it up, and it was like, yes, Harriet Tubman was an agent for the union. They put her face on a $20 bill. Well, I don't know, just some stuff just ain't adding up, like, all right, but let's, we're not, that's not, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. We're not going there. Right. Harriet will save Harriet for another day. Right. <laughs> Bring it back. Oh, here we go. How far are we in the video so far? Um, forty-one twenty-six. Woo! Rocking and rolling. All right. All right. So that was that report. Okay. So this next report. Now this. I'm excited for this juice. Let me, y'all. Let me get my water real quick. Mm. Right. Cause I gotta be well hydrated. Cause it's about to be real tea. Mm. Mm. All right. This report is called "Political Destiny of the Colored Race on the American Continent." Wordplay, continent. He understands North, Central, and South. Okay. And Caribbean island to the colored inhabitants of the United States. So this is addressed to the colored inhabitants of the United States in North America. Fellow countrymen, the duty assigned us is an important one, comprehending all that pertains to our destiny and that of our posterity, present and prospectively. And while it must be admitted that the subject is one of the greatest magnitude, requiring all that talents, prudence, and wisdom might deduce, and while it would be folly to pretend to give you the combined result of these three agencies, we shall satisfy ourselves with doing our duty to the best of our ability and that in the plainest, most simple and comprehensive manner. Our object then shall be to place before you, my colored indigenous people, our true position in this country, the United States. The improbability of realizing our desires and the sure, practicable, and infallible, excuse me, infallible remedy for the evils we now endure. Here we go. We have not addressed you as citizens, a term desired and ever cherished by us because such you have never been. We have not addressed you as freemen because such privileges have never been enjoyed by any colored man in the United States. Why then should we flatter your credulity by inducing you to believe that which neither has now nor never before had an existence? Our oppressors are ever gratified at our manifest satisfaction, especially when that satisfaction is founded upon false premises, an assumption on our parts of the enjoyment of rights and privileges which never have been conceded and which according to the present system of the United States policy, we can never enjoy. The political policy of this country was solely borrowed from and shaped and modeled after that of Rome. 1850, this is what they have said. This is what they have said. I ain't right it. This was strikingly the case in the establishment of immunities and the application of terms in their civil and legal regulations. 
The term citizen, politically considered, is derived from the Roman definition, which was never applied in any other sense, civis ingenui, which meant one exempt one exempt from restraint of any kind. Wait, wait, wait. You trying to OD me. Don't do that. <laughs> like, just pause. Let's, let's think about it and breathe a little. <laughs> so, oh. so this is saying that Hi, when, <laughs> you're so, funny. You're so funny. I'm just like, wow. So this is saying when you say that you're a citizen, that this is a Roman thing. <sighs> and it means that you are exempt from restraint of any kind. Like, and for me, like, I'm finna go on 12 feet real quick. Like, to me, that is the epitome of Satanism. Do as thou will. Like, there's no restraints on you, so just do you. You know what I'm saying? Like, this man right here, this, this, this committee right here. Wow. They just gonna leave me like that? You gonna leave me like that? Yeah, it was too much. Y'all, this is crazy. Where has this been at forever? And then on top of it, it says latinamericanstudies.org. Like, then what the flip? Like, everybody know it's up us. All right, so let's go. Oh, yeah? Okay. All right, so if you're a citizen, you are one exempt from restraint of any kind civis ingenuity okay it says civis means a citizen one who might enjoy the highest honors in his own free town the town in which he lived and in the country pardon or commonwealth and ingenuity or ingenui freeborn of good extraction Mm. all who were deprived of citizenship that is the right of enjoying positions of honor and trust were termed hostess hosties and peregrini 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 where did i know that word peregrine peregrine somebody miss peregrine's home for unfortunate whatever it's a movie with that name in it is this like pilgrim too or no it's too much Mm. I mean, it might be a little too much. Uh -oh. Well, 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 let's continue. Let's see. What's the first word? Host, hosties. H O S T E S. And what's Maybe the second one? What's, that, girl. what's mm -hmm. the second one? Peregrini. P E R E G R I N I. Do you want me to hide your screen so you can. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Why I keep catching me? Okay, have me real quick. Have me here. Have me here. I know what you're feeling. Have me. Have me so I can go get my lip chap. Hold on one second. Oh, God. It's not hidden. You're so funny. No, it's not. You know, I don't move that fast. <laughs> Hold you know on. what? F it. I'm just F it. I'm already out now, so. And I don't even know how to hide. Like, I feel like I'm failing right now in my, in my cool. You are not. Yeah. I don't know how to hide it, though. Water. <laughs> okay, I'm like, because I don't know how to hide it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can pause the video. Child, let's go ahead and read before we be twelve hours late. Yeah, and I didn't find it on the um etymology um that word. So go ahead. <laughs> Gonna explain it here, or they gonna explain it here. Hosty or no, let me go back. Um, it says all who were deprived of citizenship, that is, the right of enjoying positions of honor and trust, were termed hosties and peregrini, which are public and private enemies, and foreign, excuse me, and foreigners or aliens to the country. He better school us real quick. Hostess. A public and sometimes private enemy and peregrinus peregrinus or peregrinus an alien stranger or foreigner right all right 
the Romans from a national pride to distinguish. Oh, excuse me, let me let me get my commas together. The Romans from a national pride to distinguish their inhabitants from those of other countries termed them all citizens, but consequently were under the necessity of specifying four classes of citizens. None but the Sebes Ingenui or Ingenui being unrestricted in their privileges. So they were the top tier. There was one class called Jus Quiritium, Quiritium, or the wailing or supplicating citizen. That is one who was continually moaning, complaining, or crying for aid or the core or the core. This class might also include within themselves the Jus suffragi, suffragii, who had the privilege of voting but no other privilege. They could vote for one of their superiors, the Civis Ingenui, but not for themselves. And see the the fact that line right there. He also mentioned that um, in his manifesto, like the fact that I'm trying to run for office and I can't win, but even though I'm a free man, right. my main right. You know what I mean? So, all right, let's bring it back together. Okay. <laughs> such then, let's see. Such then is the condition, precisely of the black and colored inhabitants of the United States. In some of the states. They answer to the la- the latter class, having the privilege of voting to elevate their superiors to positions to which they need never dare aspire or even hope to attain. Side note, this Delaney character, he got some white g- union general guy to um, some specific office. Like he can't pay or help him win. I bet. Getting about, yeah, so that's why I'm like, it's like hijack, but at the same time, this, this, this convention... It's not all him, because keep in mind, these are committees, so there's like three to four names on each report that contributed to it and mm-hmm. get the report. It's like true that, like, like we really have to just basically chew this meat. Like, it's something to this Delaney character, like, I can't put my hand on it yet, but in the history, he did he did fight in the um, Civil War and helped some, some uh, you melanated man win some political office or something like that. And I was like, no. Nah. Mm. Anyway, moving on. Um, where was I at? Hold on. I'm just thinking. So he could have been an agent, or he was like, "If you can't beat him, join him." Are you there? Hello. Hello. Felon, are you there? Right. Hold on, y'all. Let's get her back. I'm going to clean the computer. She probably will call back in. I hope y'all are enjoying this. If you and your friends aren't getting this truth or those that surround you, the closest people to you, then sometimes you have to rethink your circle. And me and most of my friends talk about this truth. That's what we do. Right. All right. So. Hello? <laughs> Girl. What happened? It just said call drop. I was sitting up here. I was talking my ass off to... Uh-oh. Am I, are you recording? Yes. <laughs> no, wait. My lip chap ain't on. <laughs> you made me so sick catching me off guard. You know I'm narcissistic. It, oh. is, it is okay. Breathe, my sister. Why you don't have on your grill tonight? 
The grill makes it real. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm just trying to get my lip chat together. I had like, it's like neutral pink. And, uh. See, my homegirls, y'all, we we were gold tea. Show me. <laughs> Got it. Get into this Florida girl. Okay. Reminds me of home. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not wearing gold teeth on every video now. I like him. Like it wasn't a part of my ambiance. Like I was trying to go for a thing right like this. Oh, so, to... so it wasn't like native 2000. Well, I mean, I don't like what. Let me make me big. What my lip gloss on? You know what. <laughs> Okay. Can you see? If this thing be blown up to like full screen, I'm gonna die. <laughs> you see? Yeah, it's full screen. Hey. Okay. Y'all, like, hey, woo. Y'all, one time my friend told me I like the, the fullness of the black girl's lips. I was like, <laughs> oh, let me. I'm like, me too. I have lips. Mine a little. Okay. I, I'm gonna poke them out. Every time I go see anywhere special, I poke them out. Girl, now the screen blew up even bigger. I'm gonna need this to stop. <laughs> okay. uh, dear. All right, you're off. I I think. Say, wait, I'm gonna do a video with you, and then I'm gonna have you like. Max, look, are you still recording? Like, are you gonna edit this? No, you know I don't do ad ads. Y'all, I'm sorry. I hope y'all didn't get um, bored. Let's <laughs> keep it on topic. We were recording a video here. Right. Uh, okay, I'm back serious. Then, and then you stopped me. This is the video cut off because I was about to reread. Where'd you stop it? Where'd you... Where'd we stop? You say, um... Such then is the condition precisely of the black. Yeah. Um, such then is the condition precisely of the black and colored inhabitants of the United States. Talking about their citizenship. In some of the states, um, they have answering to the latter classes, having the privilege of voting to elevate their superiors to positions to which they had never dare aspire. I got uh, I can't or even hope to attain. There has of late, now this is the part right here, like catch T right here. There has of late years been a false impression obtained that the privilege of voting constitutes or necessarily embodies the right of citizenship. Like, I don't know about you, but the most high for me has really just been like, the, the energy of citizenship, political stuff, you know, rights and all that stuff has been on my spirit heavy. And I, I just, I never really knew how to convey it in words. And I'm just, I'm like, I don't know what to tell you to be looking out for. I just know that it matters. And like, this is a perfect summation of one of my thoughts is that like, just because like we have privileges, privileges and rights are different. You know what I mean? And as a matter of fact, on your email, I actually, there's a link to, it's some random blog, but they literally break down each type of citizen, you know what I mean? Like citizenship, like where do you stand? Like who are you? Like what's a real person versus an artificial person? All of that. So this sentence kind of got me. I was like, damn, everybody thinks that you can vote, you can drive, you can whatever, whatever, whatever. And what's the two words he used? Rights of citizenship? Citizenship and what's the other? Uh, hold on. <clears throat> no, he's saying that the fact that we can vote is giving us a false, well, it gave them and us a false impression that we have rights of citizenship, like rights, period. Oh, so rights is one thing and citizenship is another. Privileges are another. Mm. Rights and privileges, yeah. So like even that still applies to today and it's like damn like and look 
Right means Old English, writ, what Saxon, Kentish, ret, Anglian, that which is morally right, duty, obligation. Also, rule of conduct, law of the land, or law of a land. Also, what someone deserves, a just claim, what is due, correctness. A just claim. <laughs> yeah. And what's due, like, you know, truth, legal entitlement, a privilege from the root of right, meaning the right opposed to the left, is from the 13th century, political use from 1825. Um, from early 14th century as a right action, a good deed, meaning a blow with the right fist is from the 1898. So, long story short, um, rights is what we don't have. We have citizenship. We have... Are we really going down this rabbit hole too or no? No, we're going to stay on surface. I'm just going to look up the etymology. And citizenship is the status, rights, privileges, and responsibility of a citizen. So what you have is responsibilities due to them. Well, no, but okay, go back. You said status. I can't see your screen. You said status. Oh, he keep on. Yeah, status. No, well, you said four things, I feel like. Hold on. Four things. Or, I don't know, three, something like that. You see it. You're gonna make it be long. Okay, status, rights, privileges, and responsibilities. So, okay, so we have citizenship, which I think, like citizenship and a citizen, you know, it says you gotta see that, but we, I, we do have a status. <laughs> Well, when we in different status, but there are different statuses in black. Literally, it deals with the status, not your skin color. Uh, rights, we do have. Well, I don't know what's rights. Like, what's considered rights? I guess I gotta go back to the definition. Because you said it, you did say it. I was gonna have to rewind. It. Go back to recap. Oh, cool cat. Well, that's right. Good. Oh, right here. Okay. So the one, the things that stood out to me was like, um, where is it at? Legal entitlement, because a lot of this, a lot of the stuff that we're going dealing with is, you know, stuff with the law. Right. You know, so that legal entitlement is definitely fair to us. Um, the law of the land, a rule of conduct. Like um, all of that. So we, I mean, so no, we don't have that. We don't have entitlement, uh, a legal entitlement. Like that's why these police officers can get off. Like what is it called? A qualified immunity? Mm -hmm. And that's why I said we have, we don't have rights. We just have citizenship. Citizenship and, and certain privileges. Like the civil, what the civil rights gave us? Um, oh, no, not the civil rights, the Voting Rights Act. Like those things, those are the things that they tacked on so that we can have that privilege. They call it, well, I don't know. Maybe it's the right. I don't know. We just don't have everything we're supposed to have. How about that? Right. How about that? And, uh, let's go back to the thing here. So, yeah. So, that kind of jumped out to me. It's just this sentence should make people start having a conversation to be like, wait a minute. What the heck does he mean by that? Let me look into this kind of thing. Right. Anyway, continue on. A more radical error never obtained favor among an oppressed people. Suffrage is an ambiguous term which admits of several defini definitions. But according to strict political construction, means simply a vote, voice, approbation. All right. So let's talk about suffrage. Okay. Here then, you have the whole import of the term suffrage. To have the right of suffrage, as we rather proudly term it, is simple to have the privilege. There is no right about okay, so boom. Okay. 
that's what it makes sense to me. Okay, to have the right of suffrage as we proud uh, as we rather proudly term it, is simple to have the privilege. There is no right about it of giving your approbation to that which our rulers may do without the privilege on our part of doing the same thing. Where where such privileges are granted, privileges which are now exercised in but few of the states by colored men, we have but the privilege granted of saying in common with others who shall for the time being exercise rights which in him are conceded to be inherent and invi invial mm. inviolal inviolal <laughs> in viola and by ole in in viola in viola yeah because the e might That's be silent here. i think the e is silent i don't know what does that mean is that like like you can't violate it yeah <laughs> right all right we'll go with that just y'all remember to look at the etymology of that so we can put it in context you want me to look it up? I really feel like we should look it up. I just was too lazy to do it myself. I'll look Thank it you up. Study partner. You know what? Uh, Teamwork means the dream word. I N V I O L E. I N V I O L A L E. I let. I N V. I O L A L E. It's nothing on etymology. Let me look it up somewhere else. Like, is it, is it, not English? Who knows? Yeah, I'm gonna eyelash. You've been digging in your eye for like 45 minutes. And I wear contacts because I'm blind as a bat. And you won't put no eye drops in your eyes, so you know. I just don't like it. <laughs> like, so you know. Okay, can you see the screen? Yeah, I Press the, uh, the, the thing so we just have to say it. Inviolable. Inviolable. No, ma'am. Inviolable. Can you hear it? Do it again. Bye. Inviolable. Inviolable. I told you the E is silent. One more. Inviolable. Oh, wait a minute. The word was different. I'm saying. <laughs> That's I think it's the same thing. No, on the book it's missing the beat. I mean, on the um, thing it's missing the beat. I know, but they used to spell stuff different. It means never to be broken, infringed, or dishonored. Well, okay. So let's go back to the sentence. We have but the privilege granted of saying in common with others who shall for the time being exercise rights which in him are conceded to be inherent and inviolable. Right. <laughs> Why you had to use your voice? Inviolable. <laughs> All right, continuing. Like the in like the indented apprentice. Who is summoned to give his approbation to an act which would be fully binding without his concurrence? That is a period. Mm. What? I don't get it. Okay, so let's start over the whole sentence until we get it. Where such privileges? Oh, you know what? There's a there's a colon. <laughs> Where such privileges <laughs> are granted. Privileges which are now exercised in but few states by colored men. We have but the privilege granted of saying 
in common with others who shall for the time being exercise rights which in him are conceded to be inherent inherent and inviolable which means never to be broken infringed or dishonored so his rights just should not be they should not be violating our rights human rights right mm -hmm. okay like the indented indented apprentice who is summoned to give his approbation what does approbation mean A. Spell it. A P P R O B A T I O N. Approval endorsement early fifteenth century from old French approbation. Approval modern French. Approbation and directly from Latin approbationem, nominative approbatio, and approval now of action from past participle stem of approbare to assent to as good. See approve also in Middle English, now obsolete, sense of proven effectiveness and excellent. excellence. Okay. And then can I get one last word? What? Concurrence. Oh wait, I know what it means. Like when you say like I concur, like I I agree. Right. So like the intended apprentice who was summoned to give his approbation, his stamp of approval, to an act which would be fully binding without his agreement. So, basically, it's like, or not basically, it's not a basic anything. The example that comes to my mind is like, remember, I don't know who made the video about birth certificates when you have your baby and you have 10 days to claim your baby, but most people think you're supposed to just sign a birth certificate and be done with it, but by signing the birth certificate, you make them a, what is it, I don't know, you know what I mean, like, they're just not, like, a person anymore. Yeah. They get an artificial person's document, you know what I mean, and, and they basically operate as an artificial person from that point on, without even knowing. You talking about born into the matrix? Ooh, ooh. Girl, that movie creeped me out, and I'm like, dang, that's like... Hashtag facts. <laughs> All right. Okay, so continuing on. Me and my eyelash. Um, where there is no acknowledged sovereignty, there can be no binding power. Hence, the suffrage of the black man, independently of the whites, would be in this country unavailable. <clears throat> um. You ready to keep going? Yeah. All right. Much might be adduced to this point to prove the insignificance of the black man politically considered in this country, but we deem it wholly unnecessary at present and consequently proceed at once to consider another feature of this important subject. Which often the sentence. Let it then be understood as a great principle of political ec economy that no people can be free who themselves do not constitute an essential part of the ruling element. I bet that's the term. Um, essential part of the ruling element that I feel like I Googled before. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I've Googled that before. Can you um, start over? Okay. Let it then be understood, Pete Dishaw, as a great principle of political economy um that no people can be free who themselves do not constitute an essential part of the ruling element of the country in which they live what is the ruling element ruling is separated um this is, this is, I mean, the term the term it's a term 
Let me look. Let me Google it. I mean, yeah. Ruling who? Element. Girl, why is this thing about it? Go ahead. Right. Ooh, shame. I got extra deep for no reason. I'm like, damn, I'm putting it up on the screen. Mm. <laughs> no, get me together. Well, I just think it means that um we have to have our own government. We. I thought it was, I thought it was a. I thought it was a are not political. One little term that he had and stuff, you know what I mean? Anyway. It just said, let it be then understood that as a great principle of political economy that no people can be free who themselves do not constitute, which is like make up an Mm -hmm. essential part of the ruling element of a country in which they live. So it, he's just saying that politics and government and we need to be ruling over ourselves. Like we need a whole government of our own. I agree. I concur. All right. Whether this element be found upon a true or false, a just or an unjust basis, this position in community is necessary to personal safety. Right. Uh, the liberty of no man is secure who controls not his own political destiny. Then my the king say that. My uncle the king. And you know what? what? That's why they're able to gun you down because you're following their government, their laws. And it's just like they, their government, their laws are for them. It's never. Right. You, don't, you don't count. Like right. you're not a part of that. Right. Um, what is true of an individual is true of a family. And that which is true of a family is also true con- concerning a whole people. That says a lot. <laughs> to suppose otherwise is that delusion which at once induces its victim through a period of long suffering patiently to submit to every species of wrong, trusting against probability and hoping against all reasonable grounds of expectation for the granting of privileges and enjoyment of rights which will never be attained. And we're doing all that for nothing. You know, right. like, look around you. This delusion, <laughs> this delusion reveals the true secret of the power which holds in peaceable subjection all the oppressed in every part of the world. This man's spitting some keys, keys, keys. He got the keys. We might have found our prophet. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I mean, I'm not going to jump to that conclusion just yet. Because, you know, every time you get excited, it just be like a damn hook in, in, in everything. You're like, oh. But, like, the Moors. <laughs> have their profit and they're able to form a whole government off of noble Drew Ali. Um, maybe that's the curve. Like if you showing them this is our profit and this is relevant back in the day and this is relevant in the present, then they can't say that wasn't somebody speaking into your future because it's still the same. Like literally all of this, I'm trying to find a part that doesn't match. Right. Your viewers, if y'all find a part, because y'all, I'm extra. I'm just going to tell you now I'm extra. So I'm all in in this document so far. If you guys peep something that we just missed from the beginning up till now, please let me know and share with me your your point of view because I just don't want to miss nothing because this is like almost too good to be true. <laughs> all right. It's going to be true. Like, and y'all not be tripping. So, like, bring me back in. Let me know. Give me another perspective. All right. A people to be free must necessarily be their own. Girl, you, girl did, did you not just say that? <laughs> must be their own rulers. That is, each individual must in himself embody the essential ingredients, so to speak, 
of the sovereign principle which composes the true basis of his liberty. This principle, when not exercised by himself, may at his pleasure be delegated to another, his true representative. Follow the law, people, okay? How about that? Let's follow the law. Um, wait, did I go down too far? Because no man stands above correction. So if you can't do what's right, then we're gonna have to govern you. But we still are our brother's keeper. Like in the process, when you have people governing, then that's somebody holding you accountable. And that's what we're supposed to do. The most high says we're supposed to hold each other accountable. Nobody is above judgment. So it's like it applies to any kind of trying to build a community. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, it says, said a great French writer, writer, excuse me, there, a free agent in a free government should be his own governor. That is, he must possess within himself the acknowledged right to govern, right to govern. This constitute, that's in the damn, um, Declaration for the right of the rights for indigenous people in it. Yeah. Right to self govern. Yeah. Um wait, I lost my spot. <laughs> that is he must possess within himself the acknowledged right to govern. This constitutes him a governor, though he may delegate to another the power to govern himself. Um no one then can delegate to another a power he never possessed. That is, he cannot give an agency in which he never had a right. Consequently, the colored man in the United States being deprived of the right of inherent sovereignty cannot confer a suffrage because he possesses none to confer. Therefore, where there is no suffrage, there can be neither excuse me, there can be, there can neither be freedom nor safety for the disenfranchised or disfranchised. And it is a futile hope to suppose that the agent of another's concerns will take a, it's a futile hope. Don't even bother to suppose that the agent of another's concerns will take a proper interest in the affairs of those to whom he is under no obligations. Right. <sighs> They're not going to save you. Jesus ain't coming back. Nobody's coming back to save you and to whisk you away to golden street paved with um angels singing out. Like, they have sold you a, a real secure fairy tale. And it's no disrespect because we just serve the most high. You know, we know there's one creator. Him alone. Yeah, that's it. Like everything else, you're waiting for somebody to come save you. You have to pull yourself together as a people and come together. Because if if not you, then who? Right? All right. It ain't no who. It's just if not you, then just you finna be asleep forever. Uh -uh. Right. Like, literally. <laughs> right. All right. Damn, that's me. All right. Where the hell am I? I don't even know. Um, having no favors to ask or expect. Okay. Yeah, having no favors to ask or expect, he therefore has none to lose. In the in other periods and parts of the world, as in Europe and Asia, in up, the people being of one common direct origin of race. Wow. Now, this man knows too much. We really got to look into who he is. Okay. I was like, we got to look at all these committee members, the names of all these committee committee members. Girl, right? you ain't going to have me stuck what on the committee. Trump, huh? Huh? Don't be trying to treat me. No, not right now. I'm just saying, like, in general. No, no. Like, gotta, they, they need to be looked up. So I am. I'm Girl, you got followers. They can, they can shit look. Teamwork makes the dream work, okay? I got notes to take. We have notes. You have followers who are also authors. 
they could dig into this. They could look into these people. Oh, okay. the wealth. They could join in on this situation. I mean, right, right, right. Y'all do some research, and we will share it. We'll both share it on our channel. So if you do a video, well, I mean, I gotta learn how to do it first. But I mean, once I do, I got y'all. It's so funny. And don't worry, like you can't. It doesn't get any worse than this. Like I'm just so awkward. Like you don't have to worry. As long as you are spitting the truth, and as long as you're trying to get to the truth, right? Straight. Try to turn your camera to the wall if you got to. Okay. Right. All right. Help us. This is a lot of stuff. Jeez. You so funny. Big project. And I like overachievers on my team. Okay. Right. Um. All right. In other periods and parts of the world, as in Europe and Asia, for um. So you um, is gonna be on camera. I'm on camera. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> no, cause I got the screen. It's recording the screen, so you the only one on camera. You just can see me. <laughs> <laughs> you are so funny. No, I would not. Ah, uh, you saw it was what? I had like 13 heart attacks. I just want you to know. Ooh. Girl, disregard watchers. Anyway, moving on. In what? other periods and parts of the world, as in Europe and Asia, the people being of one common direct origin of race, though established on the presumption of difference by birth or what was termed blood, Yet the distinction between the superior classes and the common people could only be marked by the difference in the dress and education of the two classes. Mm. <laughs> Clearly, I can't be the only one wore out. Okay. So they all look the same. Right. But somewhere along the lines, two classes were made up. Right. Uh, and the only di distinct yet the distinction between the superior classes and the common people could only be marked by the difference in the dress, what you wore, what we wear, All right. and education of the two classes. What we know, our knowledge, our divine knowledge that comes from within, from the Most High. <sighs> Am I looking crazy into the camera? Okay. No. I felt like it because I felt like just damn, just. Okay, so. It's saying that um, the different in dress and just the education, but that's that's it. Okay. Say like our education is known the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High, as they are written as He gave them to us properly, and living like that, because they don't know. Like that's the the, the two classes, mm. you know, hypothetically or symbolically in my head. That's what I'm making it out to be. All right. <clears throat> to affect this, the interposition of government was necessary. Laying down the law of the Most High. Consequently, the costume and education of the people became a subject of legal restriction. You can't be you anymore. Guarding carefully against the privileges of the common people. In Rome, the patrician and plebeian Hey, that word plebis. Where did I read that? Where did I read that? Hold on, My Instagram? Hold on, I gotta find that. Like, give me two seconds. I gotta do it. What did I read plebis? Alright, I'll just do that on my own. I ain't gonna watch that. What is a ple what is a plebis? A uh, who? Plebeian? Plebis. It's a, it's it's a legal something. Alright, I'll just come back to it. In Rome, the patrician or patriarchian <laughs> patrician and plebeian were orders in the ranks of her people. All up see he referred to her Rome as her. Okay then. All of whom were termed citizens. Wait, 
Let me try that one more time. In Rome, the patrician and plebeian were orders in the ranks of her people, all of whom were termed citizens or seabids, seabids, or seas, recognized by the laws of the country, recognized by the laws of the country, their dress and education being determined by law. I'm looking at your face, by the way. I'm not supposed to look at the camera. Determined by law. Whose law? <laughs> the better to fix the distinction. In different parts of Europe at the present day, if not the same time, or excuse me, if not the same, the, the distinction among the people is similar, only on a modified and in some kingdoms, probably more tolerant or deceptive policy. In the United States, our degradation being once, as it has in a hundred instances been done, legally determined our color is sufficient independently of costume, education, or other distinguishing marks to keep up that distinction. True that. In Europe, when an inferior is elevated to the rank of equality with the superior class. Hold on, hold on. So this is why we should be wearing our headbands, our... <laughs> Our feathers, our chokers, our um headlets and wristlets. Our fringes, our, our I, I'm telling, I'm gonna be all white on y'all. Fringes and that that shows your distinction of who you are. See, when you start dressing like them, you blend it in, and then they say, "Well, the American is not the copper colored people found here by the Indians anymore. It's now the Europeans." Oh uh, no true um great point by the way uh in the united states our degradation being once as it has in a hundred instances has been done legally determined our color is enough or excuse me is sufficient independently of costume education or other distinguishing marks to keep up that distinction oh lord i read that already <laughs> In Europe, when an inferior is elevated to the rank of equality with the superior class, the law first comes to his aid. Girl, let me try this. The law first comes to his aid, which in its decrees entirely destroys his identity as an inferior, leaving no trace of his former condition visible. What happened? In Europe, when an inferior is elevated to the rank of equality with the superior class the law first comes to his aid which in its decrees entirely destroys his identity as an inferior leaving no trace of his former condition visible so they take up form and um and all of a sudden you're just not black no more because of the law well, and then they take up for them just like when they, they're they gunning us down, the they the media automatically goes and pulls the, the victim's um background. You know what I'm saying? They come to the aid of the person who who had who's uh in an elevated rank. Right. Superior class. Right. And they're really not the superior but the, it's not because technically like this is under like if, if it's designed under a roman you know they they biting off the romans with how they design this this, this government and, and such we have to remember too like that's one thing but then there's a whole separate power that be because even though you have white people in the grand scheme of things like literally your color doesn't matter like that's a status a all I ask, if you had a birth certificate, all I ask subject to whatever, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, you still, even if you're white, you can still give away your your sovereignty at birth. Like, your parents don't, their parents don't know either. Well, some of them do, and they learn and find out and do what they gotta do, but. Mm. All right. You, you went off into a rabbit hole by yourself. <laughs> I did because I kind of got lost. I'm like, what did I just say? <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I'm just that they're he's talking to me, describing it as Europe and how their government was set up 
like if an inferior person become, uh, uh, attains equality with the superior class, then everything just wiped away as if they're, they've been superior the whole time. You know what I mean? But on our side, you would think white people would be considered superior and the media, which, which is so false, and they fake news would make you believe that white people are superior, but really, like, we still on the same playing field. You right. sign, yo, you got the same birth certificate I got, you got the same, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, And then it got them, it's really tricking them into thinking that they're superior. It's tricking them, and then it's, it's and then you, when you think about all the stuff you see in the lying ass, fake ass news media, like, they're trying to pin people and start these race wars. Like, y'all wake up and smell the damn coffee. They're trying to play you. Yeah. Don't even give it energy. Don't and they're really playing them into going into a war that they can't win. So, it's like the how powers that be, you got to realize that they don't like a certain group of people either that look like them, but just are not from the same bloodline. They, and then they're just trying to pawn you off and thinking, you know, because your skin tone is similar. That you you know, that's that false, false idea, uh, false sense of whiteness. Yeah. Because they're just pawning you like the soldier. They're just pawning you off on us. To, you know what I mean? Like, just, I just wish everybody on earth would just wake the F up. Wake up and everybody go their own separate ways. <laughs> just, and just get these, get this knowledge and just understand, like. Well, we just want to make it be clear that we're, gonna, we're letting it be clear. We're not carrying any groups on our backs again because we've tried that over and over again in history trying to help other people and y'all just end up jumping ship and doing your own thing. So, he said in 1850, he tried to tell y'all back in 1850 and you had Frederick Douglass hating. <laughs> right. You know, like Frederick Douglass was famous. Like everybody knew Frederick Douglass. Right. Anyway, um, let us continue our. And then the thing that he was doing, name calling. He was saying that they were unintelligent. So it's just like, really? Mm. It's so hard to look at you in this dog on screen. I know they can't see you, but I'm like, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving myself life. I see. <laughs> um, okay, so it says, just like that, it gets wiped away when you join, when you get equality. But how do you do that? Um, in the United States, among the whites, their color is made by law and custom, the mark of distinction and superiority. So their law, their, their law says that their color makes them superior. superior. Right. Nothing even else. Though, even though technically it's still not about color, it's a status. <laughs> Girl. All right. So in the United States, among the whites, their color is made by law and custom, the mark of distinction is superiority. While the color of the blood, oh, you know, we gotta remember the time frame, so 1850s. I can see why you say that. While the color of the blacks is a badge of degradation acknowledged by statutes, or, hmm, organic law, what's that, and the common consent of the people. Just like when he, he tried to take his ass to Harvard, uh, with all the 17 doctors' recommendations and they let them in and all the students was they became the common the consent they all consented as a people to take, to take his black ass somewhere else because they didn't want to be in class with him. Really? Even though he got accepted, yeah. In that, you know. So with this view of the case, which we hold to be correct, to elevate to equality the degraded subject of law and custom, it can only be done as in Europe by an entire destruction of the identity of the former condition of the applicant. An entire destruction of the identity of the former condition of the applicant. I don't know about y'all, but I ain't black no more, so I did my SF-21. Okay. Even... <laughs> huh? Okay. Okay. Even were this desirable which we by no means admit with the deep seated prejudices engendered by oppression with which we have to contend ages incalculable might reasonably be expected to roll around before this could honorably be honorably be accomplished. 
Otherwise, we should encourage and at once commit an indiscriminate concubinage and immoral commerce of our mothers, sisters, why, you better tackle for yourself with mothers, sisters, wives, and daughters, revolting to think of and a physical curse to humanity. If this state of things to be if this state of things be to succeed, then as in Egypt, under the dread of the inscrutable approach, see his he was woke. He was woke. Under the dread of the inscrutable approach of the destroying angel. Did he just talk about did he just say he just did did just do that? I was like, wait a minute. Let me look again. If this state of things be to succeed, if this is going to succeed, then as in Egypt, under the dread of the inscrutable approach of the destroying angel to appease the hatred of our oppressors as a license to the passions of every white. Let the lintel of each door of every black man be stained with the blood of the of virgin purity and unsullied matron fidelity. Let it be written along the cornice and capitals. The will of the white man is the rule of my household. Right. Remove the protection to our chambers and nurseries that the places once sacred may be henceforth become the unrestrained resort of the vagrant and rabble, always provided that the licensed commissioner of lust shall wear the indisputable empress of a white skin. Now, I bet that, that's just dragging your ass off. The that is drug, honey. Mm. He's so funny. Like he is reading, he is dragging these people for filth in this paper. And, and he so giving you your history. Freaky. This is an eighteen fifty three. I need to learn how to. I'm gonna pray. I'm gonna read. I'm gonna study this paper. Anyway, you gonna be reading <laughs> people, <laughs> Bruh, I'm like this is you get this is the kind of read where you just stand there like. Wait, should I be offended? Because I ain't quite get it. Like that's it's just show you how un, like ignorant you are. <laughs> All right. So anyway. But we have fully just how long is the video, by the way? 142. Oh, jeez. But we have fully discovered and comprehended the great political disease which with which we are affected, the cause of its origin and continuance, and what is now left for us to do is to discover and apply a sovereign remedy, a healing balm to a sorely diseased body, a wrecked but not entirely shattered system. We propose for this disease a remedy. That remedy is immigration. This immigration should be well advised and like remedies applied to remove the disease from the physical system of man, skillfully and carefully applied within the proper time directed to uh, skillfully and carefully applied within the proper time um, directed to operate on that part of the system whose greatest tendency shall be to benefit the whole. Take your ass home somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And isn't that what video authors are talking about now? Like, remember when we were talking about Utah at one point? But then Utah was supposed to be like a, you know, stepping stone, or I don't know, just they end up somewhere else in Jerusalem, Peru, and South America. Sure. I don't know. What does this have to do with each other? Uh, he's letting you know that this is us. Um, when he said, as if before, as in Egypt, like that's where we came from. And then he brought you all the way through the uh, separating of the water. He is really giving serve with history. Like he's serving with history. That's funny. Like I can't even. I can't. All right. right. And, then, and then he kicked him out at the end. He said the remedy is e migration. Like you need to be going in the other direction. And he said. What's the difference between immigration and e migration? I thought e migration was like sending you in opposite direction. Sending you out the country. 
And then he said, because um, the remedy is applied to remove the disease from the physical system of man. <laughs> Did he call him a disease, girl? He is petty. He is prime time petty. He's 1850s read petty. 1850 read petty. <laughs> right. All right, so here's, here's T. Here's the T. And you know what? This is good because I know people probably not going to watch this deep into the video. And let's catch this tea right here. <clears throat> Several geographical locations have been named, among which rank the Canadas. These we do not object to as places of temporary relief, especially to the fleeing fugitive. Keep in mind, this is the 1850s. Slavery is still going on. Which, like a palliative soothes for the time being the misery but cannot commend them as permanent places upon which to fix our destiny and that of our children who shall come after us so he already knew that wasn't our inheritance but in this connection or i don't know maybe it is i don't know all the land but but in this connection we would most earnestly recommend to the colored people of the united states generally to secure by purchase all of the land they possibly can while selling at low rates under the British people and government. At that time may come when, like the lands in the United States territories, generally, if not as in Oregon and some other territories and states, they may be prevented entirely from settling or purchasing them, the preference being given to the white applicant. And here, we would not deceive you by disguising the fact that according to political tendency, the Canadas, as all British America, at no very distant day, are destined to come into the United States. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> okay, so which this would make this is what comes to mind. Um, you know how they set a autumn acres aside for the natural inhabitants, the Aborigines. But if they put it in a reserve, a reservation of plants, animal, wildlife, oh, we trying to reserve their life or preserve, because that's what they say. And you know how in our language, if it sounds the same, it means the same. So reserve, preserve, right? Okay. Well, so. Okay. Now, I thought I had a revelation, but I don't. I don't. It I, so they, they say preservation, like the um Utah National well, What's the name of the park? Zion. Zion National. It, it's a preservation. They saying, well, we got a special kind of bug that lives here. So no humans can come in here because it's going to interfere with that bug's lifespan. And so then they have the rights to our native lands. And we can't even purchase them. In a trust. Them. In a trust. But it's all that stuff is in a trust. And, but we can't purchase it because now they put the stamp of preserve on it. Saying, you know... So it's already ours. Like that's the trickery. You can't even access what's yours that they have put aside for you. They just trying to find a way to word some shit so they can steal it from you through yeah. words. Cause the only way they steal it is through words. So it's like I'm mad. Okay, go ahead. Craft the council. Craft the council. Right. Uh so he said, and this is 1850, was it 1854? I think it is. Anyway, 1850s. He's saying that the British America at no very distant day are destined to come into the United States. I wonder if at that time if the Queen had anything. You know, you know how my weenie paying taxes and stuff to her and all that crap. I just wonder. Anyway. And were this not the case, the odds are against us because the ruling element there, as in the United States, is and ever must be white. The population now standing in all British America, two and a half million of whites to but 40,000 of the black race, or 61 and a fraction whites to one black. The difference being 11 times greater than in the United States. So that colored people might never hope for anything more than to exist politically by mere sufferance. Uh, we just glad to be here. Right. Occupying a secondary position to the whites of the Canadas. We'll give you the right to vote. Okay, thanks. We're equal. No, you're not. Okay. 
the Yankees from this side of the lakes are fast settling in the Canadas. You know what I'm saying? Infusing? Infusing? What is that word? Infusing. Oh, okay. It looks like some marks on it. Okay. And mine is smaller. Um, infusing with industrious success all the malignity and Negro hate inseparable from their very being. <laughs> Damn, it's just in your makeup to hate us. Okay. As, oh, oh, whoa. Oh. The Yankees from this side of the lakes on the American side are fast settling in the Canadas, infusing with industrious success, probably building some shit, all the malignity and Negro hate inseparable from their very being as Christian Democrats and American advocates of equality. Right. We're going to bring you equality and out alone, you'll never see your property again. <laughs> This is equal up under our <laughs> definitions. Yo. That's crazy. Like, you remember that Instagram meme where it's like the real chocolate brother and he just like, it's like a video and he's just like, he's like looking like what? And he's like, oh, sh like he looks around like anybody else did this. Like, I can't believe this. Like, that's my face. Okay. Chinese man don't know 2017. <sighs> He couldn't know. All right. All right. Continuing. Then, to be successful, our attention must be turned in a direction towards those places where the black and colored man comprise by population and constitute by necessity of numbers the ruling element of the body politic. So we got to go where we at. And where, when occasion shall acquire, require it, the issue can be made and maintained on this basis. Now, I feel like some hijack about to come in soon, so let's see. Where our political enclosure and national edifice can be reared, established, walled, and proudly defended on this great elementary principle of original identity. Upon this solid foundation rests the fabric of every substantial political structure in the world, which cannot exist without it. And as soon as a people or nation lose their original identity, just so soon must that nation or people become extinct. Right. To self-identify, to dress like who you are, to identify with who you are, to Pick wake up yourself, to wake up your brothers and sisters that are you, um, all that. Yeah. Um, what was that? And when and where, when occasion shall require it, the issue can be made and maintained on this basis, where our political enclosure and national edifice. Oh wait, I wait. Oh damn, I was all the way off. Okay. Do so far. <laughs> um, as soon oh, and so soon as a people or nation lose their their original identity. Just so soon must that nation or people become extinct. Right. Powerful though they may have been, they must fall. Because the nucleus which heretofore held them together, becoming extinct, there being no longer a center of attraction or basis for a union of the parts, a dissolution must as naturally ensue as the result of neutrality of the basis of adhesion among the particles of matter. I want to bite my computer. What happened? Girl. Listen to this. Let me get myself together. Let's break it down. Upon this solid foundation rests the fabric of every substantial political structure in the world, which which cannot exist without it. And it says, now keep this in mind because this can go for us and it can go for others. It says, and so soon as a people or nation lose their original identity, just so soon must that nation or people become extinct. Okay, we got that. That definitely applies to us, but it could also apply to them too. But it came, it, it, it's what happened during the census when they start renaming you then 
you know, you're extinct. They don't know where the Indians went. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, they know, but. Right. <laughs> Powerful, no, let's break it down. Powerful though they may have been, they must fall. So I don't care how high and mighty you were, you got to fall. We were once high and mighty, we fell. Right. Wrong fell. Right. Well, but then again, did wrong really fall? They did. <laughs> they did. <laughs> I'm saying, but you look at today. Um, and it says, because the, okay, so listen to this. Because the nucleus, when you look at a cell, the nucleus is like the, the, the center. Because all the information is all everything. Because the nucleus, which heretofore held them together, because the nucleus becoming extinct, because it became extinct, there being no longer a center of attraction. Remember, the nucleus is in the center. If it becomes extinct, it's not there. Or a basis for a union of the parts, a dissolution must as naturally ensue as the result of the neutrality of the basis of adhesion among the particles of matter. Basically, like even in in in, in science, when the cell dies, the nu the nucleus is no more. The cell just as I say, so if we separate, they will automatically fall. We are their nucleus. We're their pupil. We're their every like. That's why culture vulture. That's why that's the thing. Like. You know, I remember when I was into those um, Bible camps and stuff like that, they were talking about how they stay up. They don't sleep. They don't get rest. They they literally eat, sleep, and breathe crafty counsel against you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I kind of get what that means when you start peeling back all this damn history and, and pineapples. Hashtag pineapples. Um, all right, where were we at? Um, oh, okay, got it, got it, got it. Let's go. This is the secret of the eventful downfall of Egypt, Carthage, Rome, oh, and the former Grecian state, once so powerful, a loss of original identity, and with it, a loss of interest in maintaining their fundamental principles of nationality. So now you have nothing to subjugate. You have nothing to, 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 to rule. Prejudge, you have nothing to rule, you have nothing to make you feel high and mighty. So you get bored and you just be like, F it, F this country. And so, then you want to take things. so all these kingdoms fail because we just left. We think about it, think about it. After we left Egypt, what happened? Right. After we left Rome, like, I mean, and I feel like a freaking tar because I'm like, why do I even think of that? Think about that. I always knew that when we left, that meant something for us, but I never thought about what that meant for them. Right. And now that I know, girl, with my passport, girl, let's go. I'm ready. <laughs> oh, okay. We have to do it in numbers, though. There has to be an exodus. This is this. Is this is this this this. this chat. I feel like I'm at a damn pep rally. You know what? A Shemitic pep rally, like, go team, go. <laughs> Literally, go team, go. Okay. <laughs> All right. This is the secret of the eventful down. Okay. Of the eventful down. I'm going to read that one more time. This, the nucleus dissolving kills the cell. This is the secret of the eventful downfall of Egypt, Carthage, Rome, and the former Grecian states, once so powerful. A loss of original identity, and with it, a loss of interest in maintaining their fundamental principles of nationality. Now, that also applies to us because now we've lost our identity. We have no interest in maintaining any kind of principles of nationality. Like, we just are, oh, we black. <laughs> yeah. Not. All right. This also is the great secret of the present strength of Great Britain, Russia the United States, and Turkey. Oh, okay. All right. And the endurance of the French nation, whatever its strength and power, is attributable only to their identity as Frenchmen. And doubtless the downfall of Hungary, brave so, and no... that, that, that qualifies to speak of Haiti, a French right. nation. Yeah. Okay. When you talk about the French, yes. 
So the French definitely occupied them. But they got in that ass. Stock pasta. All right. He's gonna say not boule. Oh, not boule. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. <laughs> hey, I just realized boule is the word. Right. All right. Well, which is what Steve Coakley was talking about that was in Hollywood. I'm not doing. You know, you're not gonna trick me. You're not gonna trick me. What? Well, we had two hours. We gotta go. All right. Come on. Let's finish this last little piece. Well, why we want to stop it now? Uh. I finished it. I guess at the end of the page, because we already two right. hours in. Okay. We tried, y'all. We tried. Okay. Because this not give you another 45 minutes. All right. And doubtless the downfall of Hungary, brave and noble as may be her people, is mainly to be attributed to the want and, uh, excuse me, to the want of identity of origin and consequently a union of interest and purpose. This fact, it might not have been expected will be admitted by the great Magyar, 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 in his thrilling pleas yeah. for the restoration of Hungary, Magyar. when asking aid, both national and individual, to enable him to throw off the ponderous weight placed upon their shoulders by the House of Habsburg. Somebody digging it at what that's what that's talking about. Right. Uh, <clears throat> Hungary consisted of three distinct races, as they call themselves, of people, all priding in and claiming rights based on their originality. The Magyars or Magyars, the Celts, and the Skulays. I think that's I think that's Slavs. Slavs. Skulays. I look at me talking about I'm being petty Skulays. <laughs> Skulays. Like oh, okay. No, but that's probably what's called slaves. But slaves, 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 it's the same thing. In our language, they all mean the same. Um, on the encroachment of Austria, each one of these races declaring for nationality rose up against the House of Habsburg, claiming the right of self-government premised on their origin. Now, they had all their different races be like, you know what, y'all, we finna pool together, we finna rate this, ain't this ain't finna go down. Meet me at House of Habsburg. You know what I'm saying? And put the Vaseline on your face. Um, right. But they went, they didn't do that. It wasn't like that. They went claiming the right of self-government premised on their origin. Right. Well, the same thing we should do. Like, you can't govern us because we were here before you. Exactamente. Between the three, a compromise was effected. The Magyars, being the majority, claimed the precedence. They made an effort, but for the want of a unity of interest and identity of origin, the noble Hungarians failed. All will know the results. So they tried. Right. They went, it wasn't their time. It's not supposed to work because if it would have worked, then everybody can be doing it. Nor is this the only important consideration. Were we content to remain as we are, sparsely interspersed among our white fellow countrymen, we never might be expected to be, excuse me, we never might be expected to equal them in any honorable or respectable competition or livelihood. For the reason that according to the customs and policy of the country, we for ages would be kept in a secondary position Every situation of respectability, honor, profit, or trust, either as mechanics, clerks, teachers, jurors, councilmen, or legislators, being filled by white men, consequently, our energies must become paralyzed or enervated for the want of proper encouragement. This example upon our children and the colored people generally is pernicious and degrading in the extreme. And how could it otherwise be when they see every place of respectability filled and occupied by the whites, they pandering to their vanity and existing among them merely as a thing of conveniency? Right. And you can have a Merry Christmas on that. Mm-mm. 
It's a girl, not like when we have Merry Christmas. It means like go shut it down. It's so fun. It's an inside joke from when I was in school. Well, how the hell are you gonna do an inside joke with me and I wasn't there? I get it. I get it. You explained it. Thank you. <laughs> I'm like, mm, mm not the Christmas. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you gonna leave off right here? I mean, if you don't want the video to be 33 hours, right? We're at two minutes, two hours and five minutes. Okay. So y'all, let's keep in mind, guys. This is like we're gonna be coming up on page 40. This document is. 78 pages long so we got the good chunk so i don't know you know it might be going to like part six <laughs> well i mean at least we're reading it nobody if you feel like we're taking too long to read it and that we're talking too much then just go read it for yourself and make a video that's shorter than ours and that's how that works and like see then that's how you read <laughs> oh, i'm just i'm just saying i'm just saying I mean, that's very true. Lick my ass. Oh, jeez. Okay, fine. The next video will be 50 minutes. Right. So funny. I'm like, I'm just saying. Yeah. Like, Me and my 17 falls real chill. Be real chill. Right. Okay, so y'all go over to Instagram. Styles by Nina, Calamity Jane. She's giving us life. And she's reading for us so well. Thank you, girl. Like don't find this work for me. Thank you, thank you. Th we really appreciate you. I oh, forgot my face over there. I really appreciate if somebody else would just read this document and just give, like, just y'all do something too. Shoot. Uh, did so she just, just, this, this. Did you just read them? Did you just read them? Did I? I think so. <laughs> How was it? Was it good? Yeah, it was straight to the point. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, y'all need to, somebody need to look into um who these people are on these that's doing these support. What does that mean? What does that mean for us? Are they Shemitic? Who? Reverend is They somebody. have to be. They don't I mean when you go back to Egypt, come on. Everybody know who was doing all the work in Egypt. I just don't want to like get to the end of it. You know, I, I guess it doesn't matter because I'm going to accept whatever it is, but I don't want to get to the end of this document and find out that it's like, damn, Moabites all up and through here. Not that we can't take anything away from it. Like, I'm definitely, I got to be mad. Hey, you. <laughs> I'm going to be mad. Hey, you too, me and Pharaoh came to tell everybody that I so. Uh, you gonna be mad? Be mad. I just want us to have a thing and for it to just be like, boom, this is what it is. Well, a lot of rabbit holes lead us, it, it leads us to the fact that we realize, get to a certain point that the hijack is so much that you can't come, go past that point. And you just need to go down the rabbit hole that this heat has given you. If right. you try to do on it, it's gonna make you like mad. So. Well, I just think that um, even if it is Moab, everybody knows their character. Like, all they have done is try to be us in history and, like, soul us out and just did mean stuff. And it, it reminds me of, like, um, if you ain't got no haters, you ain't Papa. Mm -mm. Right. I'm just... I'm just in shock because if it ends up being that, then it is what it is. But this seems like it's more like written by us, and hopefully, it just makes a little too clear to me. Like I'm like, wait a minute, and I like again, even tonight, this is the first time we're reading this. Like we're all reading this together. I haven't read this. Nina hasn't read it, so I'm well all the way out, and y'all just catching it on screen. And if y'all laugh, I hope you stub your pinky toe. You know what? Uh, not the pink stuff. Yeah, because that's going to hurt most. Okay. Well, y'all, thank you if you have made it to the end. 
Oh, we, we are going to leave you with all of that to ponder until <laughs> we do this again. Y'all, wrap your minds around it. It was written. We ain't write it. It was written over 150 years ago. And peace. Judge. And look, you got 19 followers now. I got two more. Yes, girl. Hey, family. <laughs> like, ooh, ooh. thank you to all the, the supporters of the truth. The truth movers, the light carriers. Like, before our generation came along, the torch had been burnt out or, or hung, you know, because we have had people fighting for us, but, you know, it's always been um, compromised. And now we find out there were a lot of agents back then. That's the scary part. It's like all of our heroes are looking to be like, uh-uh. Now you see what I mean about my whole image of reality being depixelated day by day, like... You ever seen that movie Transcendent? I think I have. Where like stuff just be like the, the damn a tree has leaves and the leaves just start disintegrating into like dust or or uh damn pixels or I don't know how the movie went like that's how I feel like. Damn. <laughs> so what you thinking? What you viewing? What is... you thinking is 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 reality? It's not the case. Like right. Still, and my my regular friends be thinking I'm crazy, but I'm like. That's just because y'all ain't read. Like, if you read what this, what was written historically, like, this is a historical document. It's been published. Right. I mean, I mean, I'm just whoa all the way out. Everything I thought I knew. So it's being depixelated, but at the same time, on this side, it's being depixelated, but on this side, a new, clearer picture is starting to form. Right. So, a, a real picture. The, the reality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No alternative facts. <laughs> Girl. Yeah. Okay, y'all. Um, we just want to wish peace and power to you. We know sometimes the information can be um, overwhelming. But stick in here with us. And we're going to get through this document. And go over and show Remnant some love on her channel. She is taking out her time to read to y'all. And she's enduring me just interrupting her and just talking and standing on my soapbox. <laughs> I think it's a good balance because, you know, I'll be extra crunk and hype. Like, I just can just read, 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 read. And you be like, girl, girl. And focus. <laughs> Well, lately I've been out of control. I mean, because I get on that soapbox and be like, these people. You keep letting me drag you down a rabbit hole, and I be trying to, like, be like, you sure? No. And you be like, no, oh, and you be coming anyway. Yeah, because I don't want to leave you in there alone. It's no fun, you know, doing stuff alone. It's lonely. This truth is lonely, so. It does. Right. But what you lose and what you are, it's not even lose. It's not even, like, I don't feel like I lost anything. No. No. I feel like you know how like on the on a, on the ocean when a boat capsizes upside down, I feel like my boat doing like this starting to write itself. So I can write that. <laughs> like this man thing this damn paper. <laughs> right. Cause he is giving everybody life right now. Okay. So yes. Thank you guys for watching. Um please comment. Don't let us just be throwing out uh, ideas and thoughts and scenarios by ourselves. Vibe with us. Comment. Let's chat about it. Right. Let's work together. Come up with resolution and remedy. I don't know about y'all. I ain't going to keep talking about it. I got to be about it. Right. Well, the we say don't talk about it. Be about it. <laughs> like, stop all that flexing and popping. You got to get involved. Okay. Get involved. <laughs> So yes, so yes. Thank you guys for watching. Sorry if you, well, I'm not sorry, actually. Let me not even lie like that. But hope I didn't wear y'all out too bad. <laughs> okay. And keep in mind, you know, this truth is kind of addictive. It is good. We did well. <coughs> mm.
My keep bad. digging for stuff. Keep digging for stuff. There's so much more that's just like gonna wear us out. It's out there. Dig, dig, dig. Share, share, share. And are you gonna see everybody yeah. off? What what am I supposed to say? Like is there a thing? Peace and power. You can say peace, love, and haggeries. Drink water and mind your business. 